I want you to look at this mob of sheep in the paddock um, and it's first in, first, first, first dressed. What I want to know is, is what's wrong with this mob of sheep. So can everybody see that? <coughs> Remember first in, first, best dressed. Anything wrong? Yeah? Not eating? <laughs> I should have, should have said at the start that anyone related to a CSU employee is not, um, and any of my students aren't either. Any, sorry? They're eating there. Full of, oh, hang on, now we're starting to think about it, aren't we? Right, who said that? How do you know? I think there might, there might be a bit of, to me, the, the past level answer for my students is there's nothing wrong with them. Right? They're grazing, they're eating, they're doing well. Um, the really smart students listen to the clues from the other lecturers as well. Thanks, Bruce. So I'll catch up with you afterwards. The high distinction answer for that is their egg count is 2,000 eggs per gram. Right? So to look at them in the paddock, to me, I went down, had another look at them yesterday afternoon. They're grazing, they're fine. They're not in too bad condition considering the, the, the season and the way it's going. But if you investigate them further, they are carrying 2,000 eggs per gram. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that and the potential implications of that um, after we've got, or as we go through the talk. I reckon, I reckon coming from the cattle industry, they're a bit down on what we call the triangle. So a little bit lacking in condition. So that's what we were going to start to talk about um, as we go through the talk. So I shall um, catch up with you at morning tea time to give you a high distinction bottle of wine. And Bruce, you owe me another bottle of wine to replace that in my, um, in my cupboard at home. So what we're going to talk about is worms, right? Sheep worms. And, and Ben's talked about it. Amy's talked about it as well. I think the first thing to do is, is there's been a lot of talk about brown stomach worm, barber's pole worm, black scale worm, it's important to get those different worms clear in your mind because there are differences and it's important depending on where you are as to what signs to look for, what the effects might be. So brown stomach worm we've got up there. As Ben said it used to be called Ostertagia, it's called Teledosagia now, it, it's brown stomach worm as we know it. The other worm that goes in with that is black scale worm, so they're a different genus, they're trichostrongos, a different species of worm basically. And then the third one that we've been hearing about this morning is barber's pole worm, right? Barber's pole worm or homonchus contortus. We split them up that way. I, I tend to teach to the students to split them up that way. So we think of brown stomach worm and black scour worm as the scour worms. Whereas with barber's pole worm, it's a little bit different. And the reason that, it, that it's useful to do that is these guys sit in the gut. They sit in the small intestine or the abomasum, the, the, the fourth chamber of the rumen, and they affect the gut lining. They cause damage to the gut lining and so the sheep can absorb the food or the nutrients less effectively. Right? That's the pattern of disease, that's how they cause their disease. Barber's pole, the one down the bottom, is different. It sits in the abomasum as well, the fourth stomach, but it's got this little spear on the head end of the worm and it pokes that into the gut and it sucks blood. So it sucks blood out of the sheep and if you have a big burden of barber's pole worm, the sheep can be losing up to 50 mils of blood per day because of the worms that are inside them. So it's important to, to keep that in mind because if we've got a problem with scour worms, these are the sorts of things we're going to see if it's bad enough. Right? Remember, we had 2,000 eggs per gram in our sheep in the paddock in the video and there wasn't any really obvious signs. But if the worm burden gets bad enough with these guys, the gut's going to be affected to such a point that we've got scouring, we've got some weight loss, we've got some poor performance. If our sheep, on the other hand, have got a belly full of barber's pole worm, then we're not going to see scouring. Right? It likes warm, wet conditions, it lays a lot of eggs, the infections build up very, very quickly. So we'll see pale gums and mucous membranes because the worms are in there sucking the blood out of the animal. And then if it gets bad enough, before we start to see much weight loss and loss of production, we'll, we'll probably see deaths if it gets that bad because it's a much quicker pattern of disease. So it's useful to split those two up. For us here, and I mean talking about us here, I've been here about 18 months, these are the main worms that we worry about, right? The scour worms. Barber's pole worm needs wet 
summers, needs wet, warm conditions to thrive. We got those in 2012, that summer when there's rain around. If it's a normal dry summer, we shouldn't have too much of a problem with barber's pollen. So that's the worms. Are they important? Well, yeah, there's a, a range of studies, and this information's in the paper. There's studies done in the mid-90s by McLeod, and then again by David Sackett and, and, and our group of national, um, a national group in the the mid 2000s and they estimated the cost of worms to the sheep industry of between 200 to 350 million dollars which on sheep numbers in those days is somewhere between probably sort of four to seven eight dollars per head over the course of a year. Ian Carmichael did some work in in primarily in South Australia and Victoria but then extrapolated that work to the prime lamb industry including the Riverina and his work, which was based over several years on a lot of farms, found that, that or estimated that worms or worm costs would cost the prime lamb industry in those regions up to about 60 or 70 million dollars a year. So again, not an insignificant cost. To understand it a little bit more, it's important to break down those costs. And there's two, two basic categories, right? We've got the costs of the worms themselves. So we've got the reduced weight gain, We've got the scouring, we've got the deaths, we've got the lost production, the reduced wool growth. That accounts for about typically 70 to 80 percent of the total cost of worms. Right? The other 20 percent is made up of the costs of worm control. So that's where our costs of drenches, our costs of some egg count monitoring, our labour in getting the sheep in or monitoring the sheep comes into. People often focus on this cost here but it's really a minor part of it. It's about 20% of the total cost of worms on our farm over the year. This production effect is, is the one that we should be more worried about to start with. And so we'll have a look at that. Um, pulled out that data, so this is the prime lamb data that Ian Carmichael put together over several years in, in South Australia and Victoria. His overall conclusion summarising all that work is that worms could cause a reduction in live weight gain in those lambs of, of 20 grams per head per day. So over many of those farms it was reducing the, or lengthening the time of turn off of those lambs to finish and sell those lambs by 20 to 30 days over a year. So it's a reasonably significant cost. The other comment he said though was that scouring and sheep deaths were not commonly seen. And when you look at the data that he's got, on the wormy farms, so the ones that were losing this 20 grams of live weight per head per day, the egg counts were generally only up to about 500 eggs per gram. Remember those sheep in the video had egg counts of 2,000 eggs per gram. Still no real obvious signs. So I think it's important to realise that. The major cost of worms is on production. A lot of that cost we're not going to notice unless you're weighing sheep regularly or checking wool growth regularly and doing things like that. That's the invisible cost. So how do we avoid that? How can we avoid the invisible cost? Pardon? Effective drenching. Effective drenching is one thing. What's effective drenching though? Worm counts, right? Effective drenching is using the right drench and we'll talk about that at the end. If we bang a drench into those sheep and there's no worms there, then we're still going to incur this cost, aren't we, for no benefit. So the most important thing to do to make sure that the drenches are worthwhile is to go out there and pick up some faeces, do some worm egg counts. And we'll talk a bit more about that in the workshop this afternoon. It's the only way you know. We looked at the sheep, we sort of hummed and hard a bit. Um, we looked at them a lot closer than normal probably because there was a couple of bottles of wine on offer for the right answer. Um, but those sheep were 2,000 eggs per gram. I certainly didn't suspect that they were wormy um, and it was just through routine worm egg counts that we managed to pick up that, that level of burden. So we take the faeces, we put it under the microscope and we'll show you this this afternoon. This is what we look at in the laboratory. So these black dots here are air bubbles. These critters here are worm eggs. Right, and we can count the number of worm eggs and that gives us an indication of what burden is inside that animal, then we can make an informed decision. As I said, if, if we've got sheep out there with 2,000 eggs per gram that we're not treating, then we're picking up that 60-70% of costs on our production, our sheep production. If we go and treat regardless, without knowing that there is a significant burden there, then we're picking up that 20-30% to 30 of the annual cost without any benefit. We're, we're recreational drenching, as Ben mentioned. 
Does that make sense? So we need to know. The first thing we need to know is where are we in this, these boxes here? Do we need to drench or not? And unless we're checking with things like where meg counts, we're not going to know many, many times. Right, the other aspect that we talked about was the cost of worm control. I said there's two things there. The first thing we've talked about already, if there's no worms, there's no point drenching. Right, if we're drenching and there's no worms in there, we're still going to incur that 20 to 30 percent of cost of worms without any benefit, without any upside to our production. So we need to know there's worms there. If there are worms there, then we need to know that the treatments that we're using are effective. Right? And you've had talks from Ben, you've had talks from Amy that show that it's, it's really difficult to know. In the past we've been able to say, well, I'm probably pretty safe in that that product and that product and that product are going to work on my farm. It's not that easy anymore. Unless you know that the products work, and Amy showed you in the last talk that there are some products that still work very well on some farms, and so you should be using those to prolong the life of all the products. If we use the wrong one, what does it cost us? This is some work from WA, done in 1995, and so sheep back in 1995 were valued at $25 a head. It's gone up, down, up, down, up, down since then, but these numbers are based on those prices. What they did over 12 months was they ran three groups of similar sheep. They treated one group with a drench that they knew was only 65% effective. They treated another group with a drench that they knew was 85% effective, and then they used a fully effective drench in the third group. And then they compared, they measured the production of those three groups over the 12 month period. And these are the sorts of differences that they found. This is in WA, so there's no barber's pole worm, it's hot dry summers, the worm pressure over the year is relatively slight. We have wet winters and we get worms in, in winter. The differences, right, so a fully effective drench compared to a 65% effective drench cost them about half a kilo of greasy wool about 10% of the wool growth over 12 months. These are weaner sheep. And about 6 kilos, so probably more than, slightly more than 10% of live weight over the 12 month period, just by using these drenches. Right? They didn't all die from worms. There are a few more scouring sheep in this group. There are a few more deaths as such that were removed from the trial, but all of the sheep weren't sick and dying um, during that 12 months. They had to measure these, these differences carefully. The other interesting thing that they found was by keeping using this trench here, they only used it three times during the year, but by the end of the year the efficacy had dropped to 38%. So if you're using those marginal drenches, and it depends a bit on what time of year you use them, using the marginal drenches and you keep using marginal drenches, then the efficacy will gradually get worse of those products. You need to keep that in mind. What does it mean on farm? This was the difference in 1995. Right? $7 per head between a fully effective drench and a 65. 65 is low, but it's certainly not the lowest. We saw drenches down around 25% efficacy in some of those, those res results that we saw before. So it's a moderately mid-range mid drench, really. But so in 1995, we're looking at $7, $2.50 a head. And as Ben said, if we extrapolate those to prices today, we're probably looking between $10 and $15 per head in lost production just by not controlling the worm. By using, we're still drenching, we're still stopping the sheep from dying, we're still keeping the disease levels relatively low, but we're not keeping the worms under sufficient control to maximise our production, to maximise our returns. This is another bit of work, or a couple of bits of work from New Zealand, so some more recent stuff, 2010 through 2012. This was looking at prime lamb production in New Zealand, so over the season from when the lambs were basically marked or weaned and through to when they were finished. And what they did was they compared a fully effective drench with a drench that they knew was somewhere between 50 and 70% effective. And so we've got replicated plots, but they're replicated paddocks, farm systems, two groups of similar prime lambs running together for the season, which was only sort of five, three to five months. Whenever they needed a drench, this group got a 50 to 70% effective one. This one got a fully effective drench. And what they found over the three to five months, and this is in both trials, separate trials, big pieces of work, good pieces of work that are published in the literature and the references are in the paper, that using that fully effective compared to our 70% effective drench returned 10 to 14% in carcass value over five months. 
Um, some of the, the numbers that they turned around are similar to Ian Carmichael's work. It took them 20 to 25 days extra to finish those lambs when they're using these sorts of products rather than a fully effective drench. So you're not controlling the worms well enough to, um, to, to maximise your production. And again, when you look at that, those studies, it's not as though all of these sheep here were dying from worms. The egg counts in the sheep that had less effective drenches were only about 500 and in severe cases up to 1,000. But generally about 500 eggs per gram. And remember that mob that we showed you in the video had 2,000 eggs per gram without any obvious signs. So the worms are there, they're not causing disease, but if we don't control them, they're going to cost us money. All right, take home messages, Peter. First one, obviously, is worms are a big cost. We're looking at, based on 1995 or 2006, extrapolated to today's figures, probably 10 to $15 a head, up to 10 to $15 a head, depending on what we're doing. Remember that the bulk of that cost is the lost production. So the bulk is the lost wool growth, the lost weight gain. It's not the cost of the drench. It's not the cost of a few egg counts during the year. It's the, it's the effect on our production. That effect can be invisible. Right? We had the mob of sheep at the start, been running in the paddocks. They were reasonably OK. We knew perhaps maybe they were going off a little bit, but they've been running around with 2,000 eggs per gram probably for at least the last couple of months. And if we didn't do the egg count, then we might not have done anything about them for another couple of months they're going to carry worms and get that cost on production. So the only way to do that and to know whether you've got that invisible cost eating away at your profits is to do some egg counts. It's also important to do those egg counts, remember, because we don't want to be drenching if we don't need to. It's going to cost us money and it's going to make resistance worse if we drench and there's no benefit from, from controlling the worm. <coughs> the third thing and we've touched on that and the guys have touched on that and the drench resistance data I think is quite interesting from around here. You need to be sure that when you do need to drench, so when you've done egg counts, the burden is significant enough, you need to put a treatment into those sheep to stop the production losses, that you're using a fully effective drench and the only way to do that is to know. Right? Know that it's a fully effective drench, it's too hard to guess now on which products are going to be effective on your farm and I think that will lead into the workshop this afternoon when we're down the yards. We'll show you how to do some resistance testing. It's relatively simple to do. If you do a resistance test and you've got the results on hand you can make much better informed decisions regarding your drench choices. Um, and if you don't then you're really guessing and it could be costing you, costing you significant money. All of that, just to, to finally finish up as well, just to reiterate what the other people have said, Wormboss is out there, it's on the internet. It's developed by AWI and the Sheep CRC. It's coordinated nationally, so there's a national team of technical um, experts from around Australia that contribute to it. It's independent and it's got all of that information about the different drenches, about the different worms and also regional worm control programs. So if you're not sure what you should be doing, you can go in there, put your postcode or your shire in there and get the latest advice for your patch as to what the latest recommendations are regarding worm control. Um, there's also a Worm Boss newsletter, an email newsletter, just one page newsletter comes out every month. You can subscribe to that for free and that will give you an update. Certainly in New South Wales, the LHPA vets are, are very good contributors to that. It will give you an update of what's happening with worms in your patch at that time as you go. So it's well worth subscribing to that as well um, to get the latest of what's happening. All right, thanks, Peter. Thanks, Rob.